Good afternoon, uh, dear viewers of the Transitional Justice uh, blog at Leuven University. My name is Stefan Parmentier and I'm a professor of human rights and transitional justice at the University of Leuven. We are very fortunate this afternoon to have with us an expert on transitional justice as well as a practitioner, Camilo Magna, Professor of Constitutional Law and Human Rights at um, University Externado in Bogota, Colombia, and also working at the Truth Commission in uh, Colombia. So the first question I would like to pose to you, uh, Camilo, is what transitional justice really means to you as a concept? Well, transitional justice to me is a, a set of exceptional measures that is implemented in exceptional times in societies to overcome different difficult situations as mass violations or armed conflicts or other war situations. Um, in this sense, these measures are implemented to uh, deal with the past, but also to looking much forward to bring the society to a new place, to a new uh, context and situation of uh, peace and human rights um, uh, situation where people can have their rights met and especially victims ha can have um, the all, all of their rights effectiveness um, uh, in, in, in a society. Mm -hmm. That's very extensive. It is. It <laughs> means that transitional justice is backward looking and forward looking it does. and it focuses on offenders and victims. Also. Is it not too ambitious then? It is a very ambitious <coughs> way of seeing justice, but it's also a way of understanding justice as a mean to, uh, to fulfill peace goals in society. So it's a, a way of uh, having human rights also effective into society. It doesn't mean that it's the only way, but it's a way to uh, pass by or pass through different difficult situations to have a more peaceful environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you are working, as we said, in the Truth Commission uh, process in Colombia, which is a very sophisticated and integrated process. Can you tell us a little bit more about that process, where it comes from and what it aims to achieve? Well, the new process in Colombia comes from a, a, deal, a peace deal between the guerrilla FARC and the national government. Uh, it's about meeting the, the rights of the victims. It's supposed to be about that. So they installed a new comprehensive system that has different, different institutions to meet with the rights of, to truth, to memory, to, um, uh, to justice, and also to have remedies or reparations to victims. Uh, we have uh, extrajudicial institutions and judicial institutions. Uh, the judicial institution is a, a special tribunal for peace, which uh, has a lot of different uh, instruments, not only from national law, but also international law and tends to prosecute people who are the most responsible for the crimes committed during the armed conflict. And then you have the extrajudicial bodies, uh, which are supposed to be the Truth Commission, but also the unit for the search of those who disappeared during the conflict. Uh, one, the, la the latter, is supposed to give uh, some news about the whereabouts of the victims of enforced disappearance and other kinds of disappearances dur during the conflict. And the other one is supposed to bring some truth and give some recommendations through uh, a, a final report mm -hmm. that needs to be submitted in 2021, in November, um, to the public. It seems that the Colombian process is probably the most extensive that has ever existed because you have different sets of measures and different sets of institutions, but all at the same time. Would, is that correct? It is a very complex process because it brings about different elements of transitional justice, but at the same time it is not clear if we are living a transitional process because uh, there is not much a transition within the same political system and also we have still a, a sort of an armed conflict in going on in, the, in, the, in, the, in Colombia. Mm -hmm. So it is a complex uh, conflict with different different political forces trying to act. Some of them uh, still want war to overcome mm -hmm. conflict through war, and others want to overcome conflict through the, uh, to peace agreements and, and, and dialogue. Mm -hmm. So this comprehensive system is trying to 
to is in between these political forces and this social situation. So it's very difficult to implement it, but also uh, it has a beautiful goal of trying to uh, meet the rights to the victims and mm -hmm. also to bring society a new perspective on what happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, last uh, question I would like to pose to you. Um, what do you see as main challenges of uh, transitional justice, first of all in Colombia, and maybe more generally, uh, in conceptually or in practice in other parts of the world? Well, there is a challenge of effectiveness. We don't really know if transitional justice can bring all actual transition to, mm. to, to society. Um, so the, the, the appropriateness or adequateness of measures uh, that are applied into society need uh, still to be assessed and we never know what kind of measure can be what kind of consequence. So it is still something that we need to study uh, and we need to deepen on that, on that knowledge. But also we need to work with societies that uh, when you apply transitional justice mechanisms, you don't know if we're, you're gonna have a, actual transition into society. Mm -hmm. So uh, people can see that they made a great effort on a transitional process, but they don't see the difference afterwards. Mm -hmm. They feel still harmed and they don't have anything back uh, from the process. So it is, it is how to translate these formal, these formal institutions, these formal mechanisms into reality mm -hmm. and how can this reality actually impact the rights of the victims and society. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the big, big uh, challenge nowadays for, for transitional justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That uh, seems quite a challenge to me. But good it luck does. with your work <laughs> in, in Colombia. And uh, thank you so much for your time and insights. And also thank you for, to the International uh, Institute for the Sociology of Law for hosting us and facilitating this interview. Thank you. Thank you.